Get this, there could be a habitable planet like Earth, but 8.6 times bigger. And I'm gonna tell you about it. Keep watching. What exactly makes a planet habitable? A habitable zone is where the planet is the right temperature for water to exist. And in our solar system, Earth is in this zone, but it's a bit more complicated than that. For example, planets around stars with strong flares and radiation might lose their atmosphere, and that is going to make that planet pretty much uninhabitable. Scientists are now redefining what makes a planet habitable, exploring new ways life can thrive and designing models to find detectable signs of life on distant worlds. Planets outside our solar system that orbit a star are called exoplanets, and those are planets we're going to be talking about in this video. What six requirements make a planet habitable. First up we have temperature. This is key as it affects the presence of liquid water. Life can thrive in temperatures ranging from as low as minus 15 degrees celsius to as high as 122 degrees celsius. That life can't be. Easy. Water even on a dry world, a small amount of rain, fog, snow, or atmospheric humidity can support a detectable microbial community, as shown in extreme deserts, for example. Then we have light. Now, life can make do with less than 10 to the power of minus 5 of the solar flux at Earth. Basically, this means that even low light levels can sustain life. And also, we have radiation. So, ultraviolet or ionizing radiation can be tolerated by many microorganisms at high levels and is unlikely to be a showstopper for life on an exoplanet. Then we have oxygen. So on Earth-like worlds, high levels of oxygen suggest the presence of oxygenic photosynthesis. So over a few percent of oxygen could basically mean the existence of multicellular organisms. Now consider this, the list of exoplanets is growing rapidly. I mean, you hear about it in the news all the time, right? With various masses, orbital distances, and star types. What we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out which of these worlds could support life and what types of life could thrive there. Our best bet is to study Earth, because this is the kind of life we have access to. I mean, we have access to ourselves, animals, species, things like that we can study. But we're not complete experts. For instance, we still don't have a definitive theory for how life began, where it began, or, or when it did begin. So what do we know right now? What we know is the composition of life, its ecological requirements and its limits. That's why most discussions about exoplanet habitability focus on these requirements rather than the origin of life. So let's categorize the requirements for life on Earth a little bit more, breaking it down into four key elements. Energy, carbon, liquid water, and other essential elements I'll get into. But how common are these elements in our solar system? So let's start off with energy, right? Energy sources are everywhere. They can come from sunlight, even really far from the star, or from stuff reacting with each other, like turning hydrogen and carbon dioxide into methane and water. Carbon. Carbon is common, and it exists as carbon dioxide and methane. Then we have liquid. Now, liquid water, on the other hand, this is rare, and in our solar system, it's primarily found on Earth. Interestingly, this limitation also seems to extend to exoplanetary systems. Rare to find water, it's not easy, so we're pretty lucky. Then there's other elements, elements like nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, sodium, and various other ones that are likely to be common and vital for life, so we really need to keep an eye out for those. So when it comes to searching for habitable environments, it's the availability of liquid water that often acts as that limiting factor in our solar system. And as as we're discovering you know these exoplanet systems this is what we have to take into account now that we've explored the fundamental requirements for life on exoplanets i'm going to tell you about the three exciting discoveries of exoplanets made by the james webb space telescope the james webb space telescope sees the universe in light that is invisible to human eyes this light is called infrared radiation and we can feel it as heat and it's basically the successor to the famous Hubble telescope and was launched on December 25th, 2021 on a mission to study the earlier stars and peer back further into the universe's past than ever before. And it reveals these fascinating details about exoplanets and the potential habitability. First up, we have LHS 475b, an Earth-sized rocky exoplanet located 41 light years away from us. This discovery is pretty cool. It's a planet that goes around a small, not so bright star in just two days. But what makes it stand out is that it's not a gas giant like most exoplanets that we've seen. It's a rocky one, so kind of like Earth, and it's a few hundred degrees warmer than Earth orbiting around its red dwarf star, which is less than half the temperature of our sun. So it's pretty small and close to its star, kind of like Earth in terms of rockiness, but is it habitable? Being so close to the star makes it hard to keep a stable atmosphere. 
The question on whether it's habitable, unfortunately not this one. This planet is too hot to be habitable. But luckily we have another contender. And this one is a lot closer to us. It is the GJ486b, situated just 26 light years away in the Virgo constellation. It's a rocky exoplanet slightly larger than Earth and orbits a red dwarf star every 1.5 days. Even though it's super close to its star and scorching at about 427 degrees Celsius, the fact that there is water vapor there makes us think it might have an interesting atmosphere around it. But scientists are pretty careful, right? Because they need more observations to be sure about the planet's atmosphere and figure out if the water vapor is from the star or the planet itself. Because, I mean, these planets are very, very far away. When I say closer, they're still pretty far away. So atmosphere are essential for habitable conditions, but why? Earth's atmosphere acts as its security blanket, enabling the existence of life by holding oxygen, filtering out harmful radiation, maintaining a habitable temperature, and facilitating the presence of liquid water. Now, while water vapor has been detected on gaseous exoplanets, finding it on a rocky Earth-like world would be groundbreaking achievement for exoplanet science. In the Leo constellation, we have our final contender, and this is the exciting exoplanet called K218b, named after its host star K218. It's about 120 light years away and sits in the Goldilocks zone around its star, where it's not too hot, or too cold. So it's just right for liquid water and possibly life. 8.6 times larger than Earth and is labeled as a Hycean world, which is a mix of hydrogen and oxygen. Basically, it means it has water along with a hydrogen rich atmosphere. And in 2021, scientists thought it could be a good place for life to exist. Now, the Hubble telescope found water, actually water vapor, and the James Webb Space Telescope has now spotted methane and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of K218b. This marks the very first discovery of carbon dioxide in the habitable zone of a planet apart from Earth. Now NASA said that the, the detection of those molecules combined with a shortage of ammonia supports the idea that the planet is hiding an ocean under its atmosphere. But it gets even crazier than that. James Webb may have also detected something called dimethyl sulfide, and I hope I pronounced that correctly, but let's call it DMS for sure. What exactly is that? Well, NASA says on Earth, this is only produced by life. And the bulk of DMS in Earth's atmosphere is emitted from phytoplankton in marine environments. This discovery is remarkable because it raises the exciting possibility that life might exist on this planet. The early web data on K218b is just the beginning. Researchers will use web to scrutinize the planet to better understand its atmosphere and potential for habitability. So make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more updates on habitable planets like this one. Imagine the chance to explore K218b equipped with a spacesuit and a versatile spacecraft. Would you go? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Make sure to check out my recent video on space tourism to learn all about space flights and space hotels. You'll see the link up here and in the description box below. Now today's video is inspired by the James Webb Telescope and I've got some exciting news. I've partnered up with Dwarf Lab to test this smart telescope, capturing insane images of the galaxy, nebula and more. So make sure to subscribe so you can catch my upcoming video showing you the stunning cosmic visuals and what exactly a smart telescope does. Drop a comment on what you'd like me to show you with this smart telescope and also what you want me to cover next. Your feedback is invaluable. So until then, stay safe and hopefully one day I will see you in space.